It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. I'm thankful that you're with me today as we continue on with our celebration of Black History Month. Uh, y'all, we just could not, could not do Black History Month without uh, featuring some George Clinton. And today we're going to Funkadelic and their classic song, Maggot Brain. Now this is one that I have heard of, but I don't think I've ever actually heard so i think this will be a first time reaction and i am happy that you are here special thanks to our friend ringo for suggesting this track uh, for us so uh maggot brain is the lead and title track from funkadelic's third album they released that in uh, 1971 uh this is a you know an innovative lingering lasting funk band uh, formed by George Clinton uh, not too far from me actually in Plainfield New Jersey back in 1968 uh, at that time the group's sound was quickly evolving from being uh, inspired by soul and doo-wop and into a more funk uh, psychedelic and experimental sound they took inspiration from uh, some of the major artists of the era Jimi Hendrix uh, Miles Davis, uh, Sly Stone, the MC5, and and many more. So uh, before we start, uh, I was confused. I am no longer confused, I, I think. Um, I have heard of Funkadelic. I have heard of Parliament. I have heard of Parliament Funkadelic. And I don't know the story behind the different names. So this is a, uh, the, the short story, I believe. Uh, the band was originally called the Parliaments. Um, and they served as the backing band for George Clinton's doo-wop uh, albums uh, in the early 60s, starting in 1964. Uh, we fast forward to, to a 1968, and there is a dispute with their record company, Revelot, who owned the name, The Parliaments. And so they renamed themselves Funkadelic, and they signed to a new record company called Westbound. And uh, fast forward to 1974, and George uh, was able to revive the name Parliament, and uh, he signed uh, a group under that name to Casablanca Records. So we got two groups uh, that largely have the same personnel, and they operated concurrently under these two names. And originally, Parliament was uh, tasked with playing more mainstream uh, funk and soul tunes with some catchy horn arrangements. Uh, meanwhile, Funkadelic stayed more experimental and freestyle with guitar-led uh, funk tunes. Uh, eventually, the ensemble toured under the name Parliament Funkadelic, or P-Funk, as a sort of catch-all for uh, George's uh, growing stable of funk musicians. So let's get to it, y'all. <clears throat> Uh, on this track, we've got George Clinton on vocals, Eddie Hazel is on the guitar, Tall Ross is also on the guitar, Bernie Worrell is on keyboards, Billy Nelson on the bass, Tiki Fullwood is on the drums, and uh, on the album they had a lot of backing vocalists as well, but this is an instrumental. Um, an instrumental that has, a, I think, a few spoken uh, uh, words from George at the beginning. And, and then they're off and going. So uh, I, I am eager to, to hear this, friends. Uh, it'll be my first time Listen, Maggot Brain from Funkadelic. Off we go. Mother Earth is pregnant for the third time. For well, y'all have knocked her up. Y'all have knocked I her up. I have tasted the maggots in the mind of the universe. I was not offended. I was not offended. For I knew I had to rise above it all or drown in my own shit. You gotta rise above, friends. Whew. That's one way to start an album. What does it mean pregnant for the third time? I wonder what the first two times were that he's thinking of. Very slow groove in 6-8. There's some interesting studio effects happening. That's 
interesting. Hmm. Colorful tonic note. the string up to that high E. We're in E minor. That's minor five. To C. Flat six. Back to one. That's the same guitar part that's being manipulated, right? Because I read this was recorded live in one take. One take. same uh, chords. E minor. Down to D. That's E minor. C. stuff but it's growing in intensity every time it comes back sort of screaming, it's, it's guttural, it's earthy, and it matches the, uh, the cover art. Take a look, you know? We've got a black woman emerging from the earth, mid-scream. As I read, George was under the influence of LSD when this was recorded, and he told uh, Eddie Hazel, the guitarist, uh, to play like he had just found out that his mother had died. Uh, he told him, you know, picture the day, how it would feel, and how he would make sense of the news, and to channel that emotion into his playing. dichotomy. There I can hear stuff is turn, turned down. The other instruments. Apparently George loved the guitar solo so much that he had the instruments turned down. The other instruments turned down so you could hear mainly just the, the lead guitar. It 
reminds me of some of the other experimental stuff that I've heard from this era. You know, whether it's Miles Davis and Bitches Brew, or some of the music concret from Pink Floyd, from, from Jimi Hendrix, looking into uh, some of these new electrified rock fusion sort of sounds. How blessed are we that um, recording labels back in the day uh, supported financially these musicians exploring their artistry. Oh. Really fascinating delay. Echo. Fuzz. Meanwhile, the, the progression is kind of unchanging beneath it. I miss the drums. I miss the drums, y'all. static nature of the progression makes it feel more approachable to me harmonically instead of it just kind of sounding like a free-for-all It's out. I have a feeling like it could have kept going and kept going and kept going. It probably, in some minds, it probably is still going. Whew. That's intense, y'all. It's a weird type of intensity because it's so slow and we never get the big drums or the big uh, sounds of of intense music that we're used to hearing it was a it was a an understated intensity it was we're serious about this y'all it's got a gravitas to it um that makes me understand why george was so drawn to what eddie had uh had performed there um maggot brain was eddie hazel's nickname and uh you know this extended guitar solo uh, that we've just heard that emerged from this take, I think in the uh, in the year since has gone on to earn not only historic uh, status and respect, but just uh, just uh, respect, right? Uh, with 
uh, I read several different critics describing uh, Eddie's solo in, in glowing terms. One said, uh, a mind-melting and emotional apocalypse of sound. Uh, I, I groove with that. I understand that. That makes sense to me. Um, as I was reading in on it, there is a, uh, a popular music scholar named Yuval Taylor who uh, called the album one of the loudest, darkest, most intense records ever made, st uh, stating that the band captured the odor of the age, the stench of death and corruption and the weary exhalation of America at its lowest. It's a heck of a quote, right? Um, it does seem like it is wholly connected to the society at the time, but somehow it manages to be timeless uh, in its uh, applicability to the underlying themes that I think gave it its its sound and its ethos. And, uh, you know, I think it's gone on to um, sort of be this ever-present uh, source of inspiration for funk artists, for rock artists, uh, you name it, uh, punk artists of the last 50 years. Uh, really uh, a seminal band, and George Clinton uh, is notorious for me. I, I need to know more about him. I have heard of his work and and of his all of his enduring stuff, but I need to know more of the sounds. So uh, I hope to get to more Funkadelic or Parliament or Parliament Funkadelic, however they name it. I want to get to more uh, in the future, but I think that's all for today, y'all. What a fantastic and moving uh, live track, right? One take, you know, unbelievable. Uh, Maggot Brain. Uh, has been <laughs> to experience from Funkadelic all the way back in 1971. And it hit me in the feels all the way here in 2023. Uh, thank you, Ringo, for suggesting this one for our ongoing celebration of Black History Month. I definitely wanted to get to some classic George Clinton and some Funkadelic and all that sort of stuff. And I am glad that we did. So thanks to all of you for hanging out with me today. We'll see you next time on another edition of the Daily Dog.